In this session of demonstration, we're going to show how to use special temporal queries in the process of geosynchronization. The scenario assumes the fictitious earthquake that hits the Monterey Bay area causes a serious oil spill from a nearby oil well. Several agencies, including an NGO, NOAA, Fengjian University, and Command Center of National Guard, synchronize the oil spill data and work together to perform the relief missions. In this scenario, the publisher is the satellite imagery team from an NGO, volunteering to collect oil spill data from satellites, use that imagery to prepare feature layers, and submit changes requests with the features to the GeoSync server provided by Fengjian University in Taiwan. Then, the request is passed to the reviewer, oil spill database team from NOAA, who apply their expertise to verify the submitted request. They place special temporal queries against the change feed and replication feed, and decide either to accept or reject the change. If accepted, the GeoSync server will send a request of transaction to the target WFS to update the database. Finally, the GeoSync server will send notifications back to the publisher as well as the follower. The command center of National Guard who subscribe the oil spill data and use this information to deploy relief forces. For you to better understand the effects of change review, First, let's have a look at the fictitious oil spill data in this demonstration. This is the quantum GIS that the database team of NOAA uses to verify the oil spill data. The feature type of oil spill is polygon with four attributes. ID, name, description, and date. From here, we also can see each single date contains three different levels of spill, heavy, medium, and light depending on the thickness of oil. The period of data set ranges from 2nd of May to 17th of July, 2010. If we put a time slider and use date attributes as the temporal reference, we can easily visualize the oil spill change over time as shown in this video. The geosynchronization process starts with the change request submitted by the satellite imagery team of NGO. Here's the example of change request defined in OWS7. It tells geosync server that this request is to be inserted into the change feed. It also specifies information, such as the date of the request, and the target web feature server, and the geospatial boundary of the features to be inserted. At last, it contains the WFS transaction of three insert operations. This slide shows the details of the insert operations in previous slide. As mentioned earlier, each single date contains three different levels of oil spill, heavy, light, and medium. The publisher then submits the change request to the GeoSync server which will generate a GSS transaction response back to the publisher, awaiting the request for review. OWS7 successfully established the framework of geosynchronization. In OWS8, we go further to implement the special temporal queries for users to assess the data within a specific time slice or interval as well as in certain boundary area. When the reviewer of NOAA receives the change request in previous slide, he or she may want to check if the request already exists in the change feed or not. Meanwhile, it's better to check if the position and size of oil spill to be inserted is reasonable or not. The following video demonstrates a simple case for reviewers to verify the change request using spatial temporal queries. This query request is implemented in get entry operation of geosync service. Again, it tells the geosync server that the query is to be placed against change feed and includes 
a section of filter encoding to specify the query conditions, which can be spatial, temporal, or both. In this example, the conditions contain both. The spatial predicates is intersects, which specify the boundary condition of features. The temporal predicates is property is between, which limits the time period of the feed. Simply speaking, this query is looking for all change requests between 13th and 18th of July 2010 in Montreal Bay Area. The reviewer then submits the query to the GeoSync server, and it replies with five entries from 13th of July to 17th of July 2010. Compared with the date of change request we show previously, the query results tell the reviewer that there exists a change request in the change feed with the same date as the current request. If the reviewer used a client that can visualize the process of query, the verification will become much easier. First, the reviewers can add in the features requested for insertion, as shown in this video. They can quickly determine if the position and size of oil spill is reasonable or not. Furthermore, they can search for the change feed within a suitable time interval, say five days before the request to see if any repetition of features occurs. In this case, the reviewer found that there exist identical features in the change feed, so they can decide to reject the request. Here is an example of disposal of change request. When reviewers decide to accept the request, they specify the entry ID of request to be accepted as well as give some commands and submit to the GeoSync server. Then, the server will reply with the response to notify the reviewer that the review process is complete. This is the demonstration of using special temporal queries in geosynchronization process.